Back in Bangkok, this is everything we ate. We went to our local 7-Eleven and bought our OG favorites, the pork and shrimp dumplings, and of course, a ham and cheese toasty. Walking around, we came across a random cat cafe and bought my first Thai iced tea of this trip. Strolling through Central World, we grabbed a yuzu drink and yuzu jelly. At dinner time, we went to Din Tai Fung, ordered a deep fried bao, and to balance our unhealthy eating, we ordered a veggie dish. Feeling much better, we ordered some Zhao Lang Bao. And for dessert, like the monsters we are, at After You, we ordered our own large size honey toast. And that's our first full day back in Bangkok. This is everything we ate. We had a busy day ahead, so for breakfast, we ordered half a dozen donuts and a coffee. Walking in the blistering heat, we grabbed some Khao Soi at a new up-and-coming restaurant, Khao Soi Yi, for lunch. Now that our stomach is full, we went over to King Power and I grabbed a cotton candy soda drink. Enjoying another fun-filled day on the skywalk, we went to a nearby soup dumpling restaurant to recharge. Headed over to Central World, we walked for hours and for dinner, we ate some Wagyu boat noodles from Tong Smith. And of course, for dessert, we ate pancha. And that's our second full day back in Bangkok. This is everything we ate. Got a late start to the day, so for brunch, we went to Shishiro, a sushi conveyor belt restaurant. Realized we ate quite a bit of food compared to a normal human being. We covered our faces from shame, paid the bill, and vowed never to return. Decided to travel by boat to Icon Siam. We grabbed a coffee at what can only be the construct room in the Matrix. Walked for hours, and for dinner, we went to Katsukura, where we had the biggest and most delicious prawn tempura I've ever eaten. Finally went to Mill Toast House to grab a strawberry toast stick drizzled in honey and their signature french toast also drizzled in honey and that's our third full day but back in bangkok this is everything we ate we decided to head to Sion paragon food court to try thipsamai a restaurant well known for their pad thai encased in a paper thin omelet layer the, the inside at first looked like shredded carrots but on closer inspection realized it was noodles never had noodles that color before and jumbo juicy shrimps included the combo came with orange juice the sweetest and pulpiest oj i've ever had highly recommend midday i caught a case of homesickness so decided to head to our local Tim Hortons and grab some drinks. Funny enough, nothing like back home and very expensive. Then went clothes shopping and realized we were large sizes here, so for dinner we decided to eat our feelings and went to an all you can eat buffet where we ate endless wagyu meat, fancy nigiris, and of course, for dessert, an embarrassing amount of Shibuya honey toast. And that's our fourth full day. In Bangkok, this is everything we ate. We went to Midtown Food Court to try a specific chicken noodle dish Tony had as a kid. The dish was yummers and it was a great experience to share one of his favorite childhood restaurants. We then headed over to Buntatong to try more food places when we accidentally came across Jai Noodle Restaurant featured in Mark Wayne's channel. We tried their wonton soup. It was wontastic and would have gone for seconds but we had more places to eat. Suffering from the heat we decided to make a pit stop at the cutest cat cafe to grab some drinks, treats, and play with fur babies. Now fully charged we headed out, found a grilled bread food stall and grabbed some condensed milk and Hokkaido milk buns. The filling did not disappoint and the bread was so crispy and tasty. We headed over to the famous J.O. Chulo restaurant and got extremely lucky. We got seated right away as they just opened their doors, ordered fried wonton, and of course, a tom yum soup with mama noodles. It was so delicious. Feeling full and on the brink of bursting, we had to push on to visit my top must-try dessert place at Junpang, where we enjoyed their signature pandan custard toast. And that's our fifth full day back, back in Bangkok. This is everything we ate. So for brekkie, we had chips, but not just any chips, Lisa from Blackpink's favorite chips, and a carton of orange juice. Headed over to Central World to grab some Tong Smith Wagyu boat noodles, plus Thai iced tea. For dessert, we we each got a coconut pandan. Dessert was surprisingly good. My only complaint was, why was it so small? Not really considered dessert if you ask me. So for dessert, we took our friends to their very first After You where we ordered a mango shaved ice and the Shibuya honey toast. I think they enjoyed it, couldn't really tell. Now that our tummies were well fueled, we needed to use it up. So off to Platinum Mall where we walked, shopped, and shopped some more. By the end, our stomachs were empty as well as our wallet. But one problem at a time. We went over to have a seat where despite the restaurant's name, we couldn't sit for a while. But once our table was ready, we ordered the pork satay and tom yum soup. They were delicious and not just because we were starving either. But the highlight of this meal was combining the fried rice with the crab curry. It was so good. Highly recommend. And that's our sixth full day. Back in Bangkok, this is everything we ate. Started off the day right by, by grabbing my all-time fave drink, Thai iced tea from Amazon Cafe. We haven't had our first meal yet and it was already noon. So we headed to our go-to sushi conveyor belt restaurant, Shishiro, and had a bunch of my OG favorite nigiris. Satisfied with our sushi craving, we ordered panna cotta and Catalana. If you ever come to Shishiro, you gotta try the dessert. It's a must try. We stopped by Mixu for their drinks and ice cream because our friend recommended and because it was literally steps away from Shishiro. Not bad and reasonably priced.
place. For dinner, we met up with my in-laws to show them around Jod's Fair, where we ordered Tom Yum noodles and rice porridge. The dishes were surprisingly good. Not done gorging on food, we stopped at a random stall and had the best mooping I've ever had. Highly recommend. And that's our seventh full day. Back in Bangkok, this is everything we ate. Slept late and woke up early, so coffee was a definite must-have. We got a Thai iced tea and an iced latte. On the road, we headed to a restaurant where we had fish balls, chicken rice, and boat noodle. The noodle was good and the soup was very flavor- Oh shoot, did I dress someone on a white shirt? Okay, all good. Suffering from food coma, we stopped at Amazon Cafe and I got an iced matcha latte. Enjoying time with my in-laws, they braided my hair. Looking good. Stopped at my in-laws friend's place where we tried a variety of mooncakes from cranberry, mint chocolate, walnut, and durian. On the road again, we went to a beautiful restaurant called Ban Nam Kien Din. There at the lake, I saw black swans, which I thought were mythical creatures and not actually real. Go figure. I didn't know what most of these dishes were, but was told the food was a mixture of Thai and European food. So good and delicious, I momentarily forgot about my millionth mosquito bites. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. And that's our 8th full day. Back in Bangkok, this is everything we ate. Went to the commons to try Foul Mouth's famous fried chicken sandwich. Being our first meal of the day and already noon, we were patiently waiting to try their food. Oh, it's ready. We got a fried chicken burger, coleslaw, chicken tenders, and macaroni with pimento cheese. The chicken tender was crispy on the outside, moist on the inside, and with a dipping sauce, it added a nice tangy flavor to each bite. Macaroni was good, never had pimento cheese before, and I've always been curious about what it would taste like ever since watching Breaking Bad. The fried chicken burger was so huge, I could barely fit it into my mouth and even then my first bite could hardly damage this monster of a burger. One of the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. After eating all that food, we got a matcha ice latte from Toku Dessert. It wasn't too sweet and had a nice bitter taste that jolted us back to life. Later for dessert, we headed over to the famous Poi Roti Lady to have her delicious egg and banana roti. It was so exciting to see her in person making it and to finally try it that I burned my mouth for the first time but it was so worth it to have that sweet and crispy roti. So good. And that's our ninth full day. Back in Bangkok, this is everything we ate. Started off our foodie journey at Rama 9 food court and got their Michelin guide Australian Angus beef bowl. Forgot to film a vertical shot of this gorgeous creation but still wanted you guys to see it. 10 out of 10 would eat again. We then headed over to Fuku Matcha to grab a Thai iced tea with grass jelly. We've seen this drink stall a number of times in the past but never bought anything till now as it was a source of some very heated debate between Tony and I on the proper pronunciation. If you know you know. Anyways the Thai tea wasn't too sweet but I think it could have gone without the grass jelly. After the Thai tea was done I ended up hyperventilating trying to get all the grass jelly out. Lesson learned. For dinner we ended up at Jod's Fair where we searched for a certain meat skewer stall. It took us a while to find but we found it and bought a ton for dinner and for breakfast the next day. We then ordered some Nutella roti. I love how with street food you can see them make it right in front of you. It was so fun to watch as we waited. Once I had my first bite though it was so good I kind of didn't want to share but don't tell Tony that. We then found a fruit stall next to the cannabis stall, no relations, and grabbed an orange juice. It was so freaking sweet with a bit of pulp action. I couldn't believe it was all naturally sweet just from the fruit. And for dessert we grabbed a Hokkaido milk soft serve. It was so creamy and refreshing, a great way to end our day. And that's our 10th full day. Back in Bangkok this is everything we ate. Got an early start to the day to head over to the famous Ploy Sai Coffee Lady. We got there just as she was setting up and realized she was streaming, so we gave a wave. Hi! While waiting, we noticed a stand selling Mu Bing, so we grabbed a few sticks to munch on. Once she was set up, we ordered a Thai iced tea and an iced latte. It was actually the first time I've seen someone make Thai tea the traditional way, sifting the tea through the bag. First impression, the Thai iced tea had to be one of the top three best I've had in Bangkok. But then trying the iced latte, it was like getting electrified with caffeine, it was so strong. Once we were both fully caffeinated, we headed back to our Airbnb to pack up. Cause you guessed it, time to head home. We got to the airport, checked in our luggages, and went straight to the Krispy Kreme stand to grab some donuts. We got the OG original Krispy Kreme, which was amazing like always, but also a cappuccino franco, which we haven't seen before. It was good and had a cappuccino filling. Feeling the approach of a sugar crash, I grabbed another ice latte to keep me awake for the rest of the trip. We went past customs and further into the airport, we ate at Bon Chan and got a Korean corn dog. It was crispy, sweet, savory, a perfect balance of deliciousness and with a refreshing Coke Zero to wash it all down. Afterwards, we got on the plane. And that's our last day back